Happy CES Eve, everybody. Uh, of course, it is I, Michael Gorman, Editor-in-Chief of Engadget, coming to you to give you the rundown of the highlights from day two here at CES 2016. Of course, the show floor opens tomorrow, but the work for us begins before that. So today we actually had a lot of the biggest companies in the industry do their keynotes. So LG, Samsung, Sony, we live blogged all of them and saw a lot of very cool new things. Uh, you know, thinner laptops, bigger, brighter TVs. We even got a couple of connected refrigerators from, from LG and Samsung in particular. Out of all of the things that they announced, which, which of course you can see on the site, uh, the most interesting bit of news from those though was that Samsung's new smartwatch, the uh, Gear S2, is actually going to support iOS later this year. So maybe we're seeing a little bit of a thawing of hostilities between Samsung and Apple. Of course, outside of those uh, big keynote presentations, there's also a lot of really cool news coming out. First up, we had Dish announced the Hopper Go, which is a tiny little puck about the size, maybe even a little smaller than an Apple TV. And it allows you to take up to 100 hours of your own DVR recordings on the road with you wherever you go, which is pretty cool. Uh, also, Nikon revealed a new flagship DSLR. It's called the D5. It costs $6,500. It has incredibly powerful autofocus, a full frame sensor, it can shoot 4K video, and it has ISO that goes over 3 million. Uh, it is an incredible piece of machinery, so all you photogs will be very happy about that. And also, the last thing I want to talk about today is another camera, but it's film based, not digital. Who would have thought that? Uh, film-based camera was going to be announced at CES this year, but it was. It's a Super 8, so any of you cinemaphiles that love those old-school home movies, it's going to be coming back. And along with the camera, which is supposed to arrive later on this year, they're also providing development services and post-production tools for the new format. So you're going to have a whole film ecosystem. So that's all we've got. Those are the highlights from day two here at CES. Of course, we will be bringing you all the best from the show floor beginning tomorrow. So stay tuned, and I will be back to bring you the best of tomorrow, tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Bye. Hello, Las Vegas. My name is Michael Gorman. I am the editor-in-chief of Engadget, and uh, joining me on stage are Engadget's two managing editors, Dana Woolman. Hi, Dana. How's it going? Good morning. Good morning. And Terrence O'Brien. Hey, morning. How's it going? It's good, man. It's loud. It is crazy loud in here. Yeah. Can you feel the electricity of the show floor? I, st I, th I feel like we've got a lot of people milling around out here that are just taking seats while they wait to go in there. Yeah, well, uh, the show floor literally just opened, uh, like, right this minute, and we can now see that the, the masses are leaving us. <laughs> the gates of heaven have opened. You can see all the big TVs in the distance. Are they the gates of heaven or the gates of hell? <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. I'm going to go with hell. To yeah. be determined. We'll see how it goes <laughs> this week. So, of course, we've been in Las Vegas for three days now, I think. Four? I don't know, it's hard to tell. Oh God, I lost count. I feel like you enter a time warp as soon as you step off the plane in yeah. Vegas every year. Today is day one of CES officially, and I already feel like CES won. Yeah. Well, day one <laughs> we for lost. everyone else. It's like day, day three or four for us. So um, how many CESs is this for you, Terrence? Nine. Nine CESs. Does it get any easier? No. <laughs> Just harder. I disagree. I think it gets easier. Yeah. This is number seven for me. Number seven. So I'm wow. I'm the neophyte here. This is this is my fifth, I believe. So I'm the new guy. Why are you the host then? How did this happen? The hair. It's all about the hair, my friend. Good point. He's still fresh and bushy tailed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's why it's why I'm editor in chief. I'm just the uh, I'm the figurehead. I'm like the queen of England, really. I'm just meant to look around and wear funny hats and wave to the people, and I let you all do all the the real work. Yeah. Seems yeah. like a pretty good gig. So what? Uh, Seems like a pretty good gig. It is, if you can get it. Yeah. It's a good deal. Um, okay, so let's talk about what we've seen thus far. Since the show floor just opened, we can't really talk about what's going to happen in there, though we can do that tomorrow. Yeah. So uh, this week, I'll start with you, Dana. So what, what have you been doing over the past couple of days? So um, I've either been at some of the pre-shows seeing some of the products on my own or... Yes. Um, avidly um, following the press conference. It's just like the rest of you guys. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
Gosh, where to start? Well, let's see. So, uh, well, let me get to you, Terrence. What have, what have you been doing thus far? Uh, I've been at all of these pre-show events, too. I haven't had to do any of the press conferences, uh, thankfully. Uh, but I have had to do, like, the big pre-CES CES events, the Unveils and the Pepcoms, which is where, you know, like, a lot of the smaller companies show up uh, so that they can rise above all the noise of the LGs and the Samsungs and the Sonys and their giant 8K foldable TVs or whatever else they're bringing to the show. For the audience back home, you are our grumpy air traffic controller in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the grumpy part, I think, is pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get to spend much time out touching things. You're just no, you're directing I, traffic. I basically live in a trailer for 10 days. Uh, and by the end of those 10 days, I'm just covered, basically, in the like atmospheric regret and shame of everybody <laughs> around me. It's pretty good. That's good. All right. Well, but we had a couple of events unveiled in Pepcom. And did y'all, y'all were both at both of those, right? We were both at both, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about, let's start with unveiled. What's, what was good at unveiled? Uh, so what did we see at unveiled, Dana? What was, what was like? I know that there was like my two, there was a couple of very interesting ones for me. Okay. Let's Belty, look. the second generation of Belty, and also some self lacing shoes. Oh, yeah. They made Belty actually look. Uh, like something you'd want to wear this yeah. time around, which in, is in is public. Kind well, of impor- important for a all right. Well, well, yeah. well, let's take a step back. Belty is a self-adjusting belt. Yes, like it's, it's motorized for the laziest of humans out there who can't be bothered to put a buckle in a hole and find the right size. Right. Uh, and it actually won one of our best of CS yes, last year. It, I don't remember for what category, but it won for something. Yeah. I think the weird shit category. Yeah, yeah. that was basically. That's 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 a that's an official end gadget category, yeah. by the yeah. way, is weird shit. Yeah, yeah. the weirdest. <laughs> um, so, but last year it kind. I don't even know what it looked like last year. It was like a weird. It, like, it was like the width of a seatbelt. It was really fat and it had like metal on it. And yeah. the, the buckle was huge. It I made think a it was lot of using, noise. It had like studs or something, and it was using those to like for traction, I guess. Yes. It emphasized the crotch and not necessarily in a good way. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But this year's, it's leather. Yeah, it the looks like much a belt. Smaller. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't do anything. No, new. that's just, unfortunately that's about all we can say about it. Is it looks like a belt? If yeah. I saw somebody in public with that on, I wouldn't immediately heap scorn upon them. Right, right. And then also, of course, we had these self-lacing shoes as well, which aren't really self-lacing so much as it's like a convertible top that goes up and down on the front of your foot, kind of a thing. Yeah, they're sort of self-tightening, and you use a smartphone app to. To do so. them. They, I, I think the fact that there actually are these Nike Back to the Future shoes that were announced a few months ago takes yeah. the, the, the wind out of their sit, these other people's sales a yeah. little bit. Yeah. But still cool and yeah. still one of the odder things that we've seen. Because who can be bothered to have to bend over and tie your shoes when you can just tap your smartphone, right? I think the fun thing about Unveiled, and for the viewers at home, Unveiled and Pepcom before the show are where we see some of the weirdest yes. things. That's yes. not where we're going to see the big Samsung televisions or whatever. Or laptops or... Yeah, so yeah. then it becomes a game of what is the weirdest crap yeah. we can find. What is the most bizarre, little, unique bit of technology? The most useless stuff, the strangest <laughs> yes. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and DeLoreans for your feet, which is essentially what these are. They're like oh, yeah. suicide doors. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's... Those are pretty weird. They are yeah. pretty weird. And be, and in the useless category as well, we also saw a water bottle with a screen <laughs> on it, which confuses me. I'm really not sure why you need a screen on a water bottle. Because Can anyone help me with this? You didn't get the memo, everything has to be smart. Yeah, this apparently. Year. That's yeah. right. That's a part of the Internet of Things, I guess, the expansion of it, all the things. Yeah, all the things have to be smart now. Like, uh, I mean, and that is actually like a trend we're seeing. Like, that's one of the big things that this year's CES is They've given up, I think, in a weird way on trying to make the Internet of Things uh, be taken seriously yeah. and have just decided, well, let's just make everything smart, throw everything at the wall and see what smart. sticks. Smart. Yeah. So, I mean, in a way, those shoes, they're smart. They have, like, a heating element. They connect to an app. I don't know why my shoes need a heater in them or why they need a door, but you can have Sure. That. And uh, similarly, you have a water bottle with a screen on it that tells you how much water you drank, because why not? You wouldn't not? know otherwise. How would you possibly know? Uh, I think and one of the more bizarre, the one of the ones that seems almost useful until you actually start thinking about it was uh, 
we saw a Wi-Fi camera that goes in your refrigerator so that while you're at the store, you can check to see if you need milk or that something. That was Samsung. That wasn't even some random... No, this wasn't Samsung. It, this Samsung. was another company. A couple of, a couple of people have I done this. I think Samsung also showed a, a fridge that had they did, probably. I think a camera so, yeah. on it. Yeah. So, but here's the problem with this. It's a very narrow field. Like, you're talking about a small, confined space, and uh, I don't know how much stuff you guys have in your refrigerator, but mine is pretty much just packed to the brim with condiments. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be able to see if I need milk yeah. through this camera. I probably wouldn't be able to see if I need anything from this camera. Like, So, there, so there's no, like, like, machine learning or vision technology that, like, can see what's happening. It's just a straight video feed of the inside of your fridge. Uh, at least this one I saw was. Okay. I don't know about the Samsung one. I can't say that I'm up on that. But Dana? So is this to, a question, stepping back, is this to see what's inside or is it to like, if you're sharing a fridge with someone, to like catch someone in the act of eating your leftovers? Well, that seems like a more likely use case is this is for spying on your roommates and your significant others when you like put the, uh, you know, carton of whatever it is that's your favorite thing. I'm like, my brain's shutting down already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I mean, that, that, so that was uh, some of the weird stuff from Unveiled. Oh, there was one, a couple of other things that I wanted to talk about okay. from Unveiled. Waking yourself up via scent. Oh, or putting very... yourself to sleep with scents. Like, I use white noise for that, but apparently, like, these are things that are being created, and I'm confused by them. Do you think that a smell would wake you up? Um, a certain kind of smell. I don't know if it would be a pleasant smell. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's the sort of thing It's very hard for us to test and evaluate as journalists right. covering the show floor. Yeah. Um, we, we hear these claims, but there's no way for us to test it when we're, you know, just going yeah. from booth to booth. It's just a novelty item, basically. So the, yeah. what I'm talking about, y'all, is... And unveiled, it's, it's basically an alarm clock, just a cube. And you put this little cartridge in the top, and it can do, I think, up to six different scents. It's like coffee and some sorts of foods. And yeah, other, and like, I think there's one smells. for like, money, too. Like, if you want to wake up to the smell of money. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all, I hear you. <laughs> I mean, I could see people wanting, I guess, maybe. I don't know, money smells kind of gross. Yeah, I thought the same. Yeah, filthy human hands all over it. I don't know. Anyway. Um, okay, well, let's let's talk about other. You kind of got into this a little bit with the IoT, but other than the Internet of Things, and uh, what other kind of trends do you expect to see here at CES, Dan? Definitely better 4K TVs. I know that yeah. it's not the sexiest thing. We've seen plenty of 4K TVs already, but yep. um, all the companies are starting to band together and agree on standards, which should result in improved picture quality across right. the board. So standards for like the delivery of 4K signals, or are we talking other like the the content itself coming to Even the TV? Things like um, HDR technology and the yeah. color balancing. So okay. it's, it's sort of going back to what we already knew, which is that it's not just about pixels and resolution, but um, going forward, hopefully these 4K TVs won't just be sharp, but will across the board have better image quality. And right. perhaps that's a reason people should hold off on buying one, at least for a little bit. Right. And also super duper thin TVs. Oh, always. Along yeah. with it. Like the, the double-sided LG OLED thing that's like, it has two screens back to back and yet it's still super, it's like as thin as my laptop. Well, because thinner is better, Michael. Always. Always better. Always. Okay, so we've got 4K TVs. What other trends? Terrence, Dana? Virtual reality, how about that? Yeah, uh, and it's sort of weird because I think a lot of people expected this to be like the year that VR like kind of blew up yep. and like there were certain people were speculating that maybe we'd see PlayStation VR here, and that didn't happen. No. Not terribly surprising. No. Uh, but sort of what it's been about instead is the sort of double-angled attack of making VR safer and also more immersive. Right. Uh, so we had HTC Chaperone, yes. which uh, allows you to kind of like double-tap a button and peek at the world in front of you. Uh, through a camera so that you don't like walk into a wall and it also can alert you like it has uh, sensing technology so that if you are going to right. bump into something it throws up the overlay of the real world and goes hey don't be an idiot don't yeah. fall down the stairs yeah uh, and then the other stuff is kind of building the more immersive thing like there's sort of gimmicky ones like immerse it which we saw it unveiled as well yeah. which turns your couch basically into like a simulator amusement park ride and oh yeah moves around yeah, moves yeah. around and does one of these 
but there's also a bunch of talk about like 3D audio and stuff and building you know a much more immersive audio environment uh, to go along with those virtual worlds. And that's that's super important because yeah. you know as much as holding a controller can really kill uh, the experience of VR, nothing will kill it more than like just standard stereo separation. Yeah, it takes a lot to fool the brain, basically. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're so it's like we they're they're getting close to figuring out kind of the visual, taking you out of the visual world. But there's a lot of other senses out there that need to be kind of fooled to really create that presence that that is the buzzword in the whole industry. Yeah. Oh, and there was another company actually, uh, Ion VR, who's who've been around for a while, but they're also showing off their stuff, and that's also part of this. Like safer, they say they've figured out this way to reduce the fatigue and the motion sickness and all of that stuff. Um, Apparently it works from everybody that I've talked to who's yeah. actually demoed it. I haven't tried it myself. The only problem is they're not talking about the technology that goes into it right now. Yeah. So I have no idea how it works. All I know is that apparently it does. And this isn't just like their PR people, like members of our staff have used it and said, no, no, no. There's like a noticeable difference. Wow. Well, that's cool. I mean, like VR really is, I think that's going to be one of the biggest things just because we've already seen several announcements. Like you said, there was the HTC thing. And that's really fascinating to me because this is one of the biggest questions that I've had for VR. Like for a long time, Oculus has been talking about how they expect VR to be more of a lean back experience, right? Just the visual, you're sitting in a chair and doing that. But with HTC and the chaperone technology, like that allows you to move around in your apartment or your home, wherever you are with out fear of running into stuff. And it was interesting to me that they've they've come up with a way, it's not just straight video pass through with this. It's like kind of a, you get the idea, but it doesn't fully remove you kind of from the visuals of the VR space. It just kind of gives you like a shadowy outline of people and things around you, right? And it clicks on automatically whenever you walk around, which to me is like, that's solving one of the biggest questions that I had about VR already. So I'm hopeful to see how that works. Um, and then the other thing that you didn't mention, but that I also thought that I just saw is like the VR uh, haptic, full haptic suit. Did y'all see this one? I did it not. It just got announced this morning. One. It was like right before we came up. But apparently some company has created a full length like body suit, skin tight with haptic actuators all over it. So that way you can literally feel like you are where you are. Who's gonna buy that right now? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I assume it's going to cost a lot of money. That person when it comes is probably out. even more serious about VR than the person who's going to send, spend six hundred bucks on the, the Oculus Rift yeah. later yeah. this spring. Which is another big. That's a good point. I could tell you exactly where that suit is going to find its use. Where VR pornography. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it definitely will. And then gaming, of course. Like you know, when you're playing battle games and you get shot or whatever, we've seen like haptic vests and stuff that kind of do that, but certainly the full body is is the next step. Like, it reminds me of, have y'all ever, have y'all read Ready Player One, a book? No. No? It's like, it was fairly well received. It's interesting. I highly recommend you check it out. But it's basically like full VR, it's like all about VR, and they talk about like haptic suits and chairs and all of this stuff that make it a fully immersive experience. And that's like set in kind of the far off future, but we're already getting there right now, which is pretty, uh, pretty exciting. Um, okay, so after VR, uh, let's get into something a little bit more specific. What has been some of the coolest stuff that you have seen thus far, Dana, in person? I know you got some laptops, right, that are coming out? Right, so I'm a little biased because reviewing laptops was sort of um, always my thing at yeah. Engadget, but um, they just keep getting thinner and lighter. And no matter how many I've tested, I still sort of can't believe just how thin and how insubstantial they are. Yeah. So is there anything else remarkable? I mean, is this, is this a harbinger of... of kind of just the continuing trend of super thin laptops? I mean, are these things underpowered for it? I think it is for better and for worse. I mean, we've already seen some thin laptops that have sometimes suffered on battery life and performance. So yeah. the holy grail will be something that doesn't that uh, can keep up and that still manages to pack a big battery. Punch. And then also, it's not just like the regular laptops. We're seeing more convertible stuff too, right? Like more aping oh. of the Surface Pro kind and of yeah. thing? Yeah, and you know, we already have seen a lot of companies, including Apple, kind of biting off the Surface formula. Yeah. But we're seeing definitely more of it here yeah. at the show. We've seen two-in-ones from, um, from Dell, from Samsung, uh, Lenovo. They all yeah. kind of have shown off surface competitors at the show so do any of these things like as a laptop as a jaded laptop reviewer i mean does any of this stuff really is it exciting to you is this just like evolutionary it's good we're glad that they keep doing this 
Yeah? Eh, eh. That exciting, huh? I mean, so it, it, it's, it's obvious what these companies are doing. They're kind of biting off Microsoft a little bit. Yeah. But sometimes they do interesting things. Um, the uh, Samsung's, for instance, happens to be super thin and light and um, is, is going to be interesting to a lot of people, I think. Okay, so we got to wrap things up here, but take away anything else you've got that you're looking forward to this week, other than, of course, these morning conversations with myself. We a good night's see. sleep. <laughs> I'd like to see that Batmobile in person. Oh, yeah, the Faraday future. Yeah. We'll have to talk about that another time. Yeah, we will I, ha- talk I have about things that to say about that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's all for us today. We will be back tomorrow. Stay tuned. Next up on stage, we have Mark Fields, the CEO of Ford. So stick around, and we will see you then.